All right, welcome everyone. My name is Kurt. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, first off, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's being as safe as they possibly can in the middle of this uh, pandemic. Um, I need to make some videos so I don't go crazy myself. Um, so today I want to talk about why hard light mode is awesome for coloring. Okay, so you know Photoshop has different Photoshop, Clip Studio, all I mean pretty much all the major photo editors. Uh, you're able to you know, change blending modes and and change the way that colors act on that mode. You know, you know, screen. A lot of people do highlights with screen mode. They do you know multiply for shadows. You you probably you've probably seen some of that before. I, I might have to do another video for all that at some point. But uh, but hard light is one of those options, and it was a mystery to me for a long time. Like I didn't really it didn't work predictably to me because I didn't understand the math that, that it uses very well. And but recently, uh, over the last a year or so, I guess I've started playing around with it more, and I found so many uses for it, and I use it all the time. It is now my current favorite, I guess, if you can have a, a favorite blending mode. So in this video, I want to talk about five different ways that you can use hard light mode to accomplish all sorts of different things. Uh, we'll run through them real quick. Uh, one is to adjust your base colors to your environment. We'll talk about that. Uh, two shadows. Three highlights. Uh, four your uh, special effects, like glows, energy, things like that. And also uh, washes or like uh, for color correction and things like that. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start with uh, adjusting your, your base color. So what I mean by that, so the way that I color, not everyone colors this way, but the way that I color, I'm going to turn off all this rendering and all the adjustments and glows and everything on this. So we've really just got the, the flat colors, and these have all been adjusted uh, to what I want the, the local colors to be. You know, the local color is just the color things are, you know, under like a, a, a white light, basically just a boring white light. You know, grass is green, the sky is blue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I usually start with those and then use different layers and things to adjust those things. And so in this example, instead of going with this bright yellow, uh, which is to make the cover stand out, uh, let's say that, uh, that it's nighttime for, the, for these two characters up here at the top. And I want to adjust these colors to make it feel like it's darker there, you know? And so in order to make these fit the environment, I'm going to use a hard light mode layer. Now, I have an action that automatically makes a hard light mode layer right above my colors. I use it so much, I just made it action. Uh, the action just creates a new layer, sets the mode to hard light, changes the name to HL, and that's pretty much it. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these two characters. I've got some selections layers down here that I'm using for that. So I'm just going to control, if I think about it, I don't know how to do it. It's control click on the on the picture and that will select the contents of that layer. So in this case, the contents of that layer are those two characters. Just saves us some time. And I'm going to pick a color that is Let's say I want to bring them in line with the rest of the environment. The rest of the environment is blue, and I really don't want any of these really bright oranges or, or things that don't really fit in that environment very much. Now, the way hard light mode works is if you're at 50% uh, gray, uh, it doesn't do much at all. Like, like, so if I put this on exactly 50% gray with no color at all in hard light mode and fill that, I don't even know if you can notice that. Like it puts a little bit of a darker tinge to it, but not very much. It doesn't really change anything dramatically. And the more that you get saturated away from that point, so as you add saturation, it's going to add more and more of that color. But I want to start in the middle, okay? When I want to just subtly shift the colors, I want to start in the middle of the color picker, right around 50% on a low saturation color. So one of these grays over here. Um, if I go brighter than that 50%, it gets really bright. If I go darker than that 50%, it gets very dark. I don't really want to make lights or shadows. I just want it to sort of tint my colors with this blue. So I'm going to go around halfway, and it doesn't have to be exactly uh, halfway, but I'm going to pick a color that's really desaturated and fill that color. And to compare this, what was there before, that was there before, and that's what this is. Okay, It's very subtle, but it kind of brings those colors in to fit a little bit better. With that environment color. Now, if I wanted to, I'm going to hide that selection. If I wanted to make it a stronger color cast, like really add a whole bunch of that color, I can just add saturation. And obviously that completely makes everything that color in the, in the image. And so you can play around with 
you know, lowering the saturation to make it do almost nothing, to tinting it slightly, and the more that I click on the saturation, it's adding more and more of that color. Okay, so I'm gonna put it, I'll make it pretty obvious, I'm gonna put it like right here, okay. So these colors, it feels more like they're in the dark, but one thing I want you to keep in mind, kind of a, I guess a tip for, for doing this, is, you know, this is really just math happening here. You know, it's, it's, it's adding that color to the mix, it's darkening it a little bit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these are all the exact colors that I want for my base colors. And these basically become your new base colors. You could merge this down if you want. You could leave it on another layer. It doesn't really matter. But just because you've added that color doesn't mean it's going to work everywhere perfectly. For example, to me, in my eye, like her skin and her hair, because they're brown uh, and opposite of blue, they are a little too desaturated. Like I, I've kind of, this blue has neutralized them a little bit. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Brown is just dark orange. Spoiler alert. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just dark orange with its, you know, varying levels of saturation. But we've got orange hair, brown skin on one side of the color wheel. I should open a color wheel and actually show you. All right, here's Magic Picker. It's my favorite color picker for Adobe. I'll put a link in the description to it. Anytime you mix complementary colors, like the browns in her skin and her hair with an opposite blue, they tend to sort of desaturate and blend into kind of a muddy, desaturated color that may or may not be what you want at that point. So when you drop, you know, a wash on, on, on top of your colors like this, don't assume that, you know, everything's going to fit perfectly. And this is something that will come with time, and it's why art is art and not science. But so what, what you can do if you want to control where that effect goes is to put a mask on that layer. Okay, in Photoshop, it's a little... Uh, square with a circle in it, and that'll add a mask. You can add mask in just about any decent app. And I can go in and select those areas, her skin, her hair, all of that. So what I'm going to do is just grab like a, a gray and color on that mask, and that's going to paint away some of that color. Okay. Now even that I think might be a little bit too strong, because uh, actually I'm using black. <laughs> let's, let's not use black. Let's use like, a, like an actual gray color here. And and you'll see that it's starting to bring some of that brown back, okay? But not all of it, but you can add as much of that back as you want. And you can see now, you can really see that if you compare like her hair color to her tail color. Her hair uh, up here is actually a little bit more saturated than her tail, even though it's technically the same color underneath. But that mask has let us kind of paint that away from that area. So you can kind of control where you want that effect to be. Now for number two, you can actually lighten or darken with hard light mode. So you could use it for shadows, kind of like you would a multiply layer. So again, I'm going to make a new layer. I've turned off my blue wash for now. Uh, made a new hard light layer. Now I've already rendered the shadows on this. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time re-rendering all of this. But I'm just going to select my shadows that I've already done on, a, on another layer. And now on my hard light layer, I'm just going to fill that with a color. And you can see that, okay, this is a hard light layer, and here, here's the contents of that layer. This is all brushed in and whatnot, um, but it's set to hard light mode, and you can see about the color that I'm using. Because I'm below 50%, it's darkening, okay? Now, again, watch what happens if I go in and brighten that color. It's going to neutralize to almost nothing, and then it's going to start getting brighter as I increase it, which is not what I want. So that's another way that you can use this mode. Now, if you're like me, and recently I've started doing more of my shadows all on separate layers. It just makes a lot more sense. And so I can go in, open a hue saturation adjustment, and shift those shadow colors around, okay? People always like to ask, like, how do you choose your shadow colors? Well, if you want to be realistic about it, your shadows are sort of the average color of your environment. You know what I mean? And what I'm and, and so for example, if the sky is blue and you're in the sunlight, your shadows are going to be cooler because the shadow areas are not being lit from the sun, they're being lit by the sky, which is blue. Okay? So if I was under a, you know, a bright blue sky, then I might have shadows that are tinted cooler. If these people were on Mars and the environment was red, then I might have a, a shadow that is also red. And again, you can play around with how saturated this is and, and all that. There's lots of ways to goof around with this mode. 
But if you don't get the right color, you know, I, I fill it with a color that I was pretty confident would be a good shadow color. But if you do it on a separate layer, just open up hue saturation and start sliding things around. Like I do this all the time, like and I'm supposed to be a professional. But yeah, I'll drop a color in and go, oh, well, that's not bad. But then I'll just start playing around. It's like, oh, that green kind of looks cool or this red looks cool or whatever. You don't have to marry your colors when you put them down. You know, you can shift them around. Now, something to keep in mind, a tip for using hard light for shadows. I want you to notice that if you're used to doing your shadows in multiply, the math is different in hard light. You know, the layer blending math that it's doing. So you can't use the same colors, okay? With hard light, if you want to make shadows, get below that 50% line or just get more saturated. That's also going to be darker most of the time. As you get more saturated, you can see, even in the color picker, we're going from light to dark, even moving sideways, okay? So sometimes, if you're wanting to darken a color, you don't have to default to just down on the color picker. You can default, you can jump to the right, which is saturation. And a lot of people don't think about that as being darker. I don't, that was a long time, I didn't either. But sometimes the right color that needs to be darker and adding black is not doing it, just get more saturated. That'll also darken it most of the time. So remember, in hard light, if you want to get darker, you're getting a little bit below 50%, and that's going to start darkening or get more saturated like we talked about. But if you try to use this color in multiply mode, it's not going to work out the same way. So I made a new layer, set it to multiply, and fill it with that color. You can see that it is not really working. It's very, very dark, not really what you want. Multiply, as a side note, what I found is it tends, you want to stay pretty bright, especially for comics where you're, you've got line art that you don't want to get your shadows too close to the line art and then you can't see enough contrast. So pick really bright colors for your shadows if you're using multiply. And again, adjust them if you need to, make them a little bit darker, make them a little bit more saturated, whatever you want to do there. But understand if you're used to picking colors in multiply mode, you're not going to get that in hard light for shadows. Because if I take this bright blue and put it on a new hard light layer, you're going to see that it lightens things because hard light gets lighter as you get lighter in the color picker. Which brings me to number three, you can use it for highlights. In the same way that we talked about uh, using it for shadows, you can also use it for highlights. So again, I can go into my colors here and I'll pick like a yellow color and you can see we've got highlights. Okay. Now again, I'm just being very rough with this just to show you guys how it works. You can try to use, you know, one color for all of your highlights, but you're going to end up wanting to adjust those for the same reasons that, you know, we talked about the, the shadows with the skin. Um, skin's more reflective. It tends to reflect a little bit warmer because of the blood underneath and subsurface scattering and all that stuff. So again, don't just drop a, a you know, one light color on everything, unless it is like a super strong, you know, John Wick looking highlight or something, you can kind of get away with that. But if you're wanting things to just be subtly lit, you know, don't get so saturated with it, you know, stay really desaturated because if I, it's not mixing as much of that yellow with what's underneath. Whereas if I get really, really saturated on my color picker, then everything is going to be really really that color okay which sometimes there's uses for this but it's not really what I wanted to do in this cover so I didn't do it but if you do want those really intense you know superhero colored lighting cast like definitely get really saturated that'll do it uh, number four glows or special effects this is a very simple one um, I've already got a layer made here but with this but uh, if I make a new hard light layer and I'm going to drag it to the top and uh, now I can go pick a really bright color and maybe a really soft brush. And what a color do I want this to be? Maybe that color. And now I've got, you know, my big special effect. And uh, just a side note on special effects, and this is really over the top what I'm doing here. But, um, but don't uh, be afraid to mess around with your colors even within a special effect, you know. So, you know, maybe as, uh, let's say with this, let's maybe we start with uh, like a blue, really saturated color and really fill all this stuff in. And then as I get closer to it, maybe I'm shifting it toward green or, or yellow and, and it starts to, you know, mix and do cool stuff. Maybe try some yellow in here and see what happens. 
But um, but yeah, like don't don't hesitate to try different colors within your glows because a lot of times you know flames will sort of work that way. They'll start one color at the bottom and you know the because the temperatures are different everywhere. So don't just you know because the flame is orange, just choose orange. Start with some gray and then maybe move it toward yellow and then brighter yellow and you know play around with that. And then the last thing is uh, washes. All right, so I'm going to go back. Uh, let's turn off my uh, nighttime thing. And what else is wrong in here? <laughs> all right, I think this. All right, so this is pretty much this is all the rendering uh, on this file. And I uh, this, by the way, is available to my Patreons uh, subscribers if you want to go in and play around with these. Uh, but all of this at the finished product, you look at it, and and some people that. If you're not, if you're new to coloring, it gets really confusing. It's like, man, how did he do all this? How do these things mix? You know, and the final product, it's easy to kind of hide your tracks and not be able to see how it was done. But if you if you do decide that you want to sign up, you can go in and see. It's like, uh, okay, there's the shadows. I can go in and check the color and see what colors they were. Uh, you can see the shadow color shifted on the skin because they, they reflect a little bit warmer. You can see uh, my highlights. You can see the lights from the gun, which are, because they're not as bright, they're contained to the shadows. Uh, and you've got all my different highlights, so you can go in there and play around with all that if you want. The last thing is, uh, you can think of it as like a wash or a glaze if you're, if you're from the traditional world, or you might uh, call it uh, like an adjustment or something. But because... It will tint your work as much as you want to tint it. I think it's really good to do like big sweeping adjustments, you know, and I'm totally guilty of this. Like I will get what I think I'm done with a piece or almost done and something doesn't feel quite right. And then I, I you know, find some adjustment or something right at the end and completely change, change everything that I've done. But for example, put a hard light layer on top of everything. And I'm just going to fill it with this uh, kind of orangey gray color. It's desaturated the blues. It's knocked them down some. It's mixing more with the oranges and bringing them up some. And I can easily go in on that layer then and you know make changes. I can shift it toward green. I can shift it toward uh, purple. And this is all giving me an overall different look. Now, again, you don't necessarily want to just drop that on top and be done with it. You could choose where you want the effect to go with a mask. You could delete it from certain areas. But this is all hard light mode. Everything, uh, the base color adjustment, the shadows, the highlights, the special effects, and now this, uh, these these uh, washes or glazes, if you want to call it that, uh, done at the end of your piece. There's a lot of ways to use it. So if you guys enjoyed the video, this is kind of a way I used to make videos. It's kind of old school talking you through everything. I'm going to try to get back to basics, I think, around here. And, uh, but if you enjoyed it, if you want to make more of these videos with me, uh, join uh, Patreon. You can join the channel. Uh, you can subscribe on Twitch. There's lots of ways to help out. Uh, there's links in the description to all my coloring courses. I've got my entire process down there. There's hours and hours of, of lessons that you can watch with, and they're all in order. You don't have to jump around YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, again, I hope everyone is being safe. I wish everyone well, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.